Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. Today we are going to talk about this pendant and how to you flow the shape in between and arrange the B setting on it. Are you ready? Let's get started. All right, looking at the shape over here, if I explode this one, you're going to see I have three components. I got one here, I got one here, and then this one, it's blended in between. So if we can create this basic shape and, um, and then move it up and then blend it in between, then we'll get this shape here. Now I noticed that it might be a little bit too hard of the angle here, but we can also adjust it if you want to. That's starting from a scratch. So I'm going to end up, end up uh, setting a one millimeter stone uh, for my B setting. So I basically just want to draw a circle and diameter for one. So this is just a reference for us to look at it. Now let's starting drawing the shape. I'm gonna come in with the arc tool, starting with the zero and coming maybe something like this. Okay, and then after that, I'm going to draw another straight line, maybe coming over here. And I would like to use the blend tool to blend in between here and here. So then I will get smoother uh, blend over there. All I need to do to get it symmetrical is to mirror to the other side. All right, so we done this one. Let me just go ahead to join it. All right, so now we got this one and we want to take a look on our circle. It'll be roughly somewhere like this, right? Uh, to be more exact, I can simply just moving from the center of the circle and snapping into the quadrant there. And I would like to take a look um, if I'm going to use the B setting, and this is a one millimeter stone, and I do like it, this one to be offset. And let's say we want to offset this curve on both direction. So both sides, click on it. And then the distance I would like to have for 0.6 millimeter. So I give us a little bit room for the prong. And if you want to have a bigger prong, you might want to have a bigger space. So let's take a look on this and see if we like the shape. If you feel like the shape is too big or you don't like it, you can change it from there. Okay. So the second thing is we need to give in a curvature there. So to make a curve, we can simply pull up those four points and just moving up like this. And notice that it is a kink there and doesn't look too nice. So what we wanted to do is actually to rebuild this guy first. And we want to rebuild to the even number. And the important part is here is the degree is three and we click OK. Now let's go ahead to move maybe those six point and we want to move it out a little bit and maybe this one and this one you want to coming out a little bit more to get something like this. All right, so let's give it a try. We are going to come into the top view and the top view with this point, I'm going to creating a cross section. So let's go to use the rounded rectangle snapping the center to here and we are going to set one millimeter stone so i want to have the length about 1.2 by 1.2 and just give it a little bit round corner something like this okay and then uh let me did it this circle we no longer need it and let me just uh mirror to the other side Snapping to the zero, holding the shift, and you will get something like this. All right, and I also might want to adjust this point to make it uh, flow better, to make it blend better later on, and tilt it the angle something like this. Maybe have it go all the way to the other side. All right, let's give it a try. We wanted to do the sweep one rail. And you want to pick up the rail, cross section, cross section, make sure all the arrows are facing interior. And then hit enter. 
and you want to recall the history as well. All right. So now we get that first shape. We are going to have this going up roughly about the shape, making a copy. And if the shape is kind of too close and it's blocking it and it will be hard time for us to set the stone, we actually want to move this toward inside. So let me move it 0.3 millimeter on both sides, 0.3. So that way it's not uh, blocking there. The stone will flow better. All right, so now we need to blend those two. Let's see if the blend surface will work. We're going to pick up the blend surface and chain age is equal yes. We're going to go from here to here and make sure they are all aligned. And we'll have something like this. And because this is a too big of the turn, so your blend look really weird over there. So let me see if I can adjust this. Let's go bigger. This goes smaller and this is still not working really well. So abort and we are trying other way. Now what I like to do is we have the original sweep one rail, the rail over there. So let's do this instead of blend surface. I would like to blend the curve and we want to blend from this end to this end. You can see it's like really tight there. So actually I'm going to edit this curve a little bit more. Let's click OK. Um, so we got this curve here and we do want to move it on our side view to make it look nicer. So we want to go moving this point coming down. Maybe something like this. And also maybe you want to rebuild it to get more point to edit. So let's say we're going to go with the seven and then maybe moving those out. Something like that. So you have enough room for your chain to go through. And maybe this one up a little bit. Okay, so let's give it a try. So we want to use the sweep one rail and we want to pick up this rail and this is a cross section and this is another cross section and make sure they are aligned well facing the same direction and then we'll get something like this. Make sure that you don't have the kink there. If you do, you need to adjust this one. So let's go ahead to record a history. And we can turn on the control point on this curve here and see if this is too tight. If it is just too tight, you may want to move this one out a little bit more. So that way you will get more room for the chain that you're going to use. Okay, so double make sure everything look uh, Nice in the render view, you don't have too much of the kink there. If you do maybe like right here, you want to keep adjusting until it is smooth. So all we need to do now is having this guy here. And since it's symmetrical, then we can mirror to the other side. So now it is for the stone setting part. We do need to have a curve for us to uh, array the stone. So let's use extract the ISO curve. And we want to extract it from this surface and snapping into the midpoint. So make sure the midpoint is on. And I'm going to mark it into the red color. So let me bring in the stone. I'm going to mark the stone into the cyan color. And you can download the stone at the description below. And we simply want to bring the stone to that first, uh, close to that first point. And we also wanted to tilt it the stone. Follow this curve. Have the girdle sticking into the uh, surface nicely as much as you can. And I try to adjust the stone into the middle as much as you can. So we are going to use the command array along curve. And um, we are going to pick up the object is actually our stone. And the base curve is this curve. So, so far I have two here. So I'm going to guessing maybe I need 20. 
And you also wanted to make sure you have a little gap in between. It's about 0.1 to 0.2 millimeter. Apparently this is too big. So maybe I need a little bit more. Let's try 30. And 30 is kind of blocking each other. So let's go back to 26. And 26 is still too close. So maybe we just need a little bit more. So let's try 23. So then I will have one just right in the middle. Okay, so it looks all right, and then we'll click enter. And then next things I wanted to do is do the prong. So basically I wanted to draw a straight line, something like this. And I wanted to pipe it for the size like that. And for this prong, apparently it's a little bit too big. I'm going to scale it down and move it right there and that's moving in to about here. Make sure that you want this prong is cutting equally on both sides of the stone like this. In my case, I have a shear prong. In your case, you might want to have a full prong for each of the stone. It's up to you, depends on your design. This might be need to be a little bit smaller. I usually don't like the prong is too big, but I need it to big enough without, you know, breaking it uh, at the setting. So let me move it to the other side and making a copy. We need to have the prong before setting a little bit taller. So let me to over the table. Let me move it up a little bit. And if you want to know more about the stone setting, I do have a class, uh, online class for it uh, that explains all the detail about the stone setting principle for the 3D modeling. Okay, so we're going to flow one more time. That's using the same command, array along curve. And I'm going to pick up this one and this one. And we're going to pick up the base point. And basically it will be the same number as we use there. So we get something like that. Now I'm missing two on the top, simply just having those two prong and mirror to the other side. And double make sure that some of the prong may stick it out on the bottom. You might need to move it back again. Or when you try to arrange over there, you might want to bring in again so you don't have to do them individually. And with the chin on, and uh, you can also cut the pilot hole in the back to get the better uh, light for the stone. And that will be our infinity pendant. I hope you enjoy the video. If you are new to the Rhino, check out my course on my website. That is an excellent one for a beginner. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.